Welcome back. If it is joining us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channels Television. A reminder of our top stories. Federal government confirms purchase of military equipment from $1 billion drawn from excess screwed account in anticipation of National Assembly approval. Police lay siege to the home of Senator representing Kogi West, Dino Malaye, shortly after being prevented from traveling out of the country by the Immigration Service. INEC chairman refutes claim of plan by the commission to create additional 30,000 polling units ahead of the 2019 general elections. And jubilation in the streets of the Armenian capital as Prime Minister quits following days of protests. ChannelsTV.com has more information for you and on YouTube.com slash channels web you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on the mobile on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channel 24 app has an eyewitness feature that you can use to share your pictures, videos or news of happenings that are going on around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. Speaking of which, here are some pictures and videos you sent into our portal. Let's take a look at them, shall we? We begin with this one from Badagri in Lagos State. It shows these people with whom our eyewitness reporter describes as residents protesting an alleged blackout for more than 20 years. The protesters are asking the ECO, Electricity Distribution Company, to address their plight immediately. Next is this image from Kilo in Surulere, still in Lagos, showing the bad state of the road there. Our eyewitness laments the suffering residents endure on this road. He is more worried about the gridlock that the bad road causes, especially in the mornings. Going to work and returning in the evening is a nightmare. He wants the Lagos State Government to do something about this to ease the stress. A final image comes from Kogi State. It's at Ajaokuta. We see the expansion joint that our eyewitness reporter thinks is growing beyond normal. He is worried about the expansion, which he says could result in a road accident and calling on the attention of both the state and federal governments to help fix it. Thank you for sending in those pictures and please keep them coming. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, says there is no plan to open more polling stations in the country, as alleged by the opposition, the People's Democratic Party. He offered this assurance while addressing journalists after he received staff of the Independent National Electoral Commission from the Kingdom of Lesotho. The delegation is in the country on a four-day visit to study Nigeria's election strategic plan to be adopted in their country. The PDP had earlier requested that Mr. Yakubu publish the location and status of polling units in the country, alleging that INEC was secretly planning to create 30,000 illegal polling units in compromised areas through which votes would be allocated to the ruling All Progressives Congress. This is very important for us in this period of African partnership for um, conducting proper um, free and fair and credible elections learning from our own experiences within the continent. The Commission will make available not only knowledge of the processes that led to the production and validation of the INEC strategic plan and the strategic program of action, but also our election project plan. There is no controversy. INEC is not creating 30,000 polling units, full stop. We are looking for the strategic plan because we know that Nigeria, the first strategic plan, they successfully uh, I achieved it by 75%, over 75%, So, which, which makes it a record. That's why we came here to learn what they are doing to strategize the elections because we are prone to snap elections. So we are just crossing our fingers that by 2022 we'll go for the next one. At least it takes five years from this year. 
Policemen have laid siege to the Abuja residence of the senator representing Kogi West in the National Assembly, Dino Melaye. The police action is coming after Senator Melaye is released by the Immigration Service, who had earlier detained him at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja this morning. Our correspondents reports that the security agents have, however, been unable to gain access to the senator's residence after a group of protesters from the Kuchingoro IDP camp blocked their path. They say the federal lawmaker has been good to them and they will not allow the police to take him away. Senator Belaye had earlier said immigration officials informed him that he is on the Interpol watch list and could not be allowed to travel out of the country. The efforts to arrest Senator Melaye may not be unconnected to his refusal to report at the force headquarters in Lokoja, the Kogi state capital, for questioning by the police. Some members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria have been arrested by men of the Nigeria police in the nation's capital, Abuja. This followed a clash between the security personnel and members of the IMN, otherwise known as Shiites who trooped out to continue their protest against the refusal of the government to release their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zagzaki. The group's protest had turned violent last week when the police attempted to stop them with tear gas and water cannons, with the IMN members fighting back with stones and damaging vehicles in the process. A similar situation also played out today at the Metama area of Abuja, as the police used tear gas to disperse them, the protesters threw also damaging some cars in the area. The Shiites last week vowed to continue their protest until El Zagzak is released by the federal government. I'm going to toss it over now to Ibrahim Adra in Abuja. Hi, Ibrahim. Great to see you. Hello, Marachi. Good to see you as well. Now we begin from the courts, uh, especially this restraining order that has been granted by a state high court in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital, against the publication of the name of the PDP national chairman, which is a conduit in the federal government looters list. The defendants, including the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, or their representatives, were absent in court. But the Chief Judge of River State Justice, Iyayi Lamikara, who is presiding over the matter of libel, also asked Mr. Secondus to serve them with the appropriate notices and adjourn the matter to May the 28th. Counsel to the plaintiff, Mr. Emeka Etiaba, explains that the case is on course. And a federal capital territory high court sitting in Maitama will be ruling on the no-case submission filed by a former PDP National Publicity Secretary, Mr. Olisa Metu, on a two-count charge bordering on alleged destruction of evidence. The case, which is before Justice Ishak Bello, was adjourned to May 31 with the consent of all counsel, even though the court did not sit on the matter. Mr. Metu's counsel, Dr. Onyeche Bazu, had earlier told the court that the prosecution had not established any case to warrant the defendant to be called to enter his defense. He added that his client had a constitutional liberty and could not be prosecuted where he either refused to make a statement or withdraw any part of his writing in the course of making a statement. He reminded the court that the charge by EFCC was that Metu destroyed his statement and obstructed the agency officials by willfully tearing his statement. The prosecuting counsel, Mr. Silvanus Tahir, on his part, had urged the court to establish whether or not a prima facie case had been made against the defendant. Meanwhile, a Lagos High Court sitting in Ikeja has adjourned the suit involving suspected kidnap kingpin Chukudumeme Omamadike, also known as Evans, to June the 8th. The matter is to be heard on the date pending a directive from the Chief Justice of Lagos State. Counsel to Evans, Mr. Lukoya Ogumeji, had written to the Chief Judge requesting for the case to be transferred from Justice Oluato in Taiwu to another judge. Ogumbeje stated that in December 2017, when the judges in the Judicial Division were reshuffled, the Chief Judge had ordered that only cases that had been part hard should be taken by the judges to their new assignment. Ogumbeje explains that at that time, the trial had not started in this case, but Justice Taiwo still took the case with him. He also alleges that the judge admitted as evidence a document that had not been served on the defense by the prosecution along with the confessional video CD. Evans is standing trial with co-defendant Victor Aduba on four-count charge of kidnapping of Silvanus Ahanonu and unlawful possession of firearms. 
Now, from the court to security matters, victims of alleged arson on Naka community in Gwe West, local council area of Benue State, have threatened to drag the Nigerian army before the National Human Rights Commission. The residents want the army to arrest those who burnt down their homes and rendered them homeless, rather than blaming some unidentified hoodlums for the attack. Several houses were burnt and properties destroyed in what has been described as a reprisal, allegedly by soldiers following the alleged murder of one of their colleagues. Debris of household items, burnt cars and shattered windows are a sad reminder of last week's arson on Naka town in Benue state. Another sad reminder is the unfortunate killing of a 72-year-old man who was burnt alive in his own house. And this elderly man was burnt alive. You can see the bones, precisely femur bones and tibia bones. Destroyed food barns and burn certificates and documents litter the whole area. The army had in a statement denied any involvement in the attack, putting the blame on some unidentified hoodlums. But the victims disagree as a narrate how soldiers in full army regalia marked vehicles and guns allegedly burnt down their homes. So we are in uniform. They are having, having uh, military cars um, with, with a plate number of Nigerian army. Wonder. We are in Nigerian army in the phone, having guns that have Nigerian army's number. Without being told, I am convinced that these are military officers from Nigerian army. I have appealed to the army to remain calm and give me time to unravel the mystery surrounding the deaths of their personnel. Despite the military provocation, nobody should take law in her or his hands. A lawmaker representing Gwe West Federal Constituency in the National Assembly wants army authorities to fish out those who allegedly carried out the attack. They had Nigerian army vehicles. They were carrying guns with Nigerian army inscriptions on them and they were wearing military fatigue with their name tags on it. And one of the witnesses even called the name of an officer, Omaru Isa, that she saw. And I want to make this public to the Nigerian army. We have a name that we're going to bring before the Human Rights Commission. We have taken this issue to the United Nations Human Rights Commission, to the National Human Rights Commission. We are not letting this matter die down until every member of the military who carried out this act is brought to justice. How do you know? The ruins and devastation in Naka is yet another reminder of the recent onslaught on innocent citizens, particularly in Benue State and also a wake-up call on the concerned authorities to arrest the perpetrators and bring them to justice. There will be more reports when the news at 10 returns, one of which is Nigerian Brewery's PLC declares profit after tax of 33 billion naira for the year 2017 at its annual general meeting in Lagos. Do join us again.